Hello and welcome to the 13 Nights of Horror. I am TJ Washuk. And I am Evan O'Neill. In today's episode, we'll be discussing Mimic from 1997. Yeah, this is a Guillermo del Toro movie. The plot of this movie is these cockroaches cure disease. And these cockroaches are infecting children around the New York City. I'm not sure if it's in other states but it's in New York City at the time. And uh, the main character, her name is... Dr. Dr. Susan Th Tyler. Yes, she comes up with an idea to create a bug, a bioengineered bug that carries a disease that kills the cockroaches. So they put that down in the sewers and eventually kills the disease-ridden cockroaches and the children are safe, or so you think. Flash forward three years later, and we learn that they've been mutating. They, uh, the genetically modified bugs were supposed to die out, but they didn't. They figured out a way to breed, and uh, they have an accelerated metabolism, so they've been breeding. They've gone through multiple generations, and uh, now they're like human-sized, and uh, they've learned how to mimic us in some ways they have like this weird facial skull cover. plate yeah skull plate thing that looks like a human face it's weird um in the movie they're called long johns because <laughs> yeah. they're kind of like tall they stand up on their hind legs i guess you know walk around um so in the movie you see them attacking um people um that think that they're actually humans with like long trench coats you know it's a little bit whimsical but uh it is yeah um, and actually, a trivia on the creatures, the Long Johns, they make the same sounds as the fairies in Pan's Labyrinth, which uh, Guillermo del Toro also directed. Yeah, he likes, uh, he likes to have cohesive or cohesion with his movies. Uh, another bit of trivia, this was Norman Reedus' first film. He makes a brief uh, one-scene appearance. Yeah, he finds, I guess, a dead corpse of one of these nudist bugs like in its larva phase so it's still pretty big but it's not man-sized mm -hmm. there's a director's cut in this movie or there was a director's cut of this movie apparently Guillermo del Toro and the Weinsteins which own a Miramax who uh, produced this had a dispute uh, throughout the movie and uh, he almost ended up quitting uh, the, the movie uh, del, del Toro but uh, Maria Sorvino, um, she actually um, convinced him to stay up, stay on with the movie and continue filming. Um, yeah. So a few years later, he made a director's cut of this, which was his envision of it. Um, now this is a pretty dark movie. Most of it takes place in the New York subway tunnels and below that. So uh, not a lot of lighting. It's a very dark movie. I'd say the sound design is pretty good. Yes. Um, Especially considering a lot of the noises you hear are like bug noises or just uh, metal clanking around. It's a uh, it's a pretty good horror movie, I think. I think so. A great creature design. I think there's CGI used um, for for a lot of it. Yeah. Um, I don't know if it's all done with you know puppeteering and whatnot, but I think it's CGI, which is yeah. pretty good. For '97, it had a 1997. It had a 30 million dollar budget. Yeah, that's pretty up there. Um, and I saw they only made twenty five million, <laughs> so yeah. they, they lost they lost money on this one. Um, there was a goof I noticed in this movie. 
there's a guy and his son that get into the picture of helping out the doctors uh, take out the um, Judas Bugs and um, one of his name is uh, Manny played by uh, Giancarlo Gianni who was in uh, Casino Royale and Quantum Solace his fun his son name was his name was Chewy the doctor um, Susan Tyler um, she was calling for Manny or she's calling for Chewy when she never even met Chewy um, she was should have been calling for Manny at the time I don't know if you caught that um, she did meet Chewie in the subway station. He was clicking, clacking his spoons. Yeah, but how did she know he was down there? Uh, I'm guessing that Manny filled her in. And, you know, it's supposed to be assumed that they were, talked about why the hell Manny was down in the, in the subway tunnels. Mm. I know, I just thought it was, it was odd. Something, uh, something off, uh, off screen happened. Yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. <laughs> So there's a little continuity, right? As, um, yeah. Also, it had um, F. Murray Abraham. He was kind of like the consultant, I guess, for Dr. Susan Tyler. He has been in a few movies. Um, probably the most famous was Amadeus. It also had Charles S. Dutton as the uh, police officer in the film. Oh, and Josh Brolin. How could we forget him? <laughs> yeah, Josh Brolin's role was not not as big as the other characters, yeah. even though it seemed like it, he was going to be. Um, J- Charles Dutton's character, uh, the police officer, he swears a lot. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I liked his character. He was a funny. He was there for the comedic relief, I guess. Yeah. And also there's a scene where they have to rub um, the scent of the bugs. They break it open. Yeah, kind of reminded me of like a, uh, like a mayonnaise paste that they were <laughs> rubbing on each other. Elmer's glue. Yeah. Cover yourself in this insect gland. You'll smell like one of them. And I also found it surprising that they didn't have really any any weapons that they went down to protect themselves with. Yeah, Leonard had a gun. And, that's that's uh, about it. That's about it. <laughs> that was it. I mean, well, I guess they went down with the intention of trying to find smaller bugs... Hmm. And then they end up, you know, realizing that it's giant bugs. Uh, Susan Tyler, Dr. Susan Tyler, the main character, she gets dragged down to the deeper depths uh, because she's abducted by one of the bugs at one point. Yeah, for some reason they didn't kill her or uh, Chewie in this movie. I don't think they killed Chewie because he was, like, clicking back at him with his little oh, clicky spoons. Yeah, he was kind of like a... Um... Uh, interpreter, if you will. Yeah, interpreter. Or, or maybe they, maybe they didn't know what to do with them because <laughs> spoke the language. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, you know, no reason why they didn't kill the doctor, the good doctor, other than, uh, you know, it's a movie. But it's a good True. movie. It's a good movie. I don't want to tear it apart. Del Toro makes good movies. I want to say it was my buddy Corey Bazer that first told me about this movie a while back. Uh, it's been several years since I've seen it. Yeah, and I um, on the IMBD page... It says it's been referenced in um, various forms of media, including like Buffy the Vampire Slayer and um, a few other things. And um, apparently this was a short story at first. Yeah, and it was ad- a short story called Mimic. Yeah, and they adapt into a big screen. Um, there are two sequels. There's uh, Mimic 2, and then there is Mimic 3 Sentinel. Mm. So Mimic 2 came out in 2001. And uh, it had a running time of like 100 or 82 minutes, and then uh, Mimic Three came out in 2003, and it was only 77 minutes. Yeah, I don't really see how they can really expand too much off of this first Mimic. I mean, I'm sure those other ones were okay-ish, <laughs> but uh, this is a good standalone horror film. I felt. Yeah. Yeah. Um... I don't think you need to see the, the sequels to get what you need out of this one. It was, uh, it was a pretty good movie, in it, and you have Hulu. Check it out. Yes. Uh, if you don't have Hulu, find another way to watch it. It is a Del Toro film, so in some regards, it's worth watching. Uh, well, that is going to do it for Mimic. Uh, thank you for watching. Don't forget to comment, rate, and subscribe. Or comment, thumbs up, and subscribe. <laughs> uh, I am T.J. Washuk. And I'm... Evan O. This has been a Two Guys production.
two guys wearing normal t-shirts. <laughs> two guys wearing the same shirts.